How is it possible for, for both Jews and Gentiles to be justified freely by God's grace? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Romans on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing Romans chapter 3 verses 21 to 31, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Romans chapter 3 verse 21, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 21. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at, at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. Over the past three chapters, Paul has been trying to show the Jewish and Gentile Christians in Rome, as well as non-Christian Jews and Gentiles, that God has always justified people by faith. Back in the Old Testament times, the Jews had the law of Moses, and the Gentiles didn't. But that didn't mean that the Gentiles had no law, they just had a different law. The one God gave to Noah, that had lasted for all until the Jews received the law of Moses at Mount Sinai, at which point they alone were bound to that law, being the Gentiles. However, even with this being true, both Jew and Gentile broke their law, and since neither law was sufficient to save them, both were in need of a savior. The Jews had an advantage over the Gentiles in that their law foretold them of this Savior, the prophet like unto Moses in Deuteronomy 18. However, that is where the advantage stopped, for both Jew and Gentile would be saved the same way, through faith in Jesus. That was certainly hard for the Jews to hear, for they thought that justification came through the law of Moses, and it might lead the Gentiles to boast for they didn't have to become doers of the law of Moses in order to be saved. Both views were wrong. God had never justified any Jew by the law of Moses. It was always by grace through faith, for the blood of bulls and goats could not remit sin. And yet, even with this being true, the law itself is a witness to the righteousness of God. How? Because the law and the prophets foretold of what Paul is speaking about. It was Moses who foretold of the coming of the prophet like unto him. It was Nathan who foretold that the Messiah would come from the house of David. It was Isaiah that foretold that the Messiah would pay the price for sin and rise again from the dead. And so did numerous other prophets in the Old Testament. By fulfilling these words, God was showing the Jews his faithfulness to his own words and his righteousness in forgiving all who came to faith in him, even the ones committed, even the sins who were committed under the old law. But lest the Gentiles believe they can boast that the Jews can't be saved by their law and that they didn't have to follow the law of Moses either, Paul reminds them that all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Included in that all was them too. And so there was nothing to boast about, for they needed a Savior as well. And that Savior would save both Jew and Gentile that would come to believing faith in Jesus Christ. There would be no difference. All sinned and fall short of the glory of God and there Therefore, all would be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, the all who would be justified doesn't mean everyone would be justified. In other words, universal salvation. For verse 22 makes it clear that those who will be justified are those who believe in Jesus. What he is saying is that since all sin the same way, all will be justified the same way. 
Now, how is this redemption possible? Does God simply pretend that sin didn't happen? Does he simply sweep it under the rug? No, a price had to be paid. That's where that word propitiation comes in. You see, the righteous justice of God meant that he couldn't overlook sin. The wages of sin is death, and so that is what man deserved, and that's what God must mete out. Unless, of course, someone came along and paid the price for sin so that God's justice and wrath could be appeased and man could be forgiven. Enter the blood of Christ. Recall from Genesis 9 verse 4 that God said that the life was in the blood, which is why the death penalty was to be exacted upon those who shed man's blood. Well, sinful man could shed his own blood, give his own life, and try to offer that as the payment for sin, but since God won't accept a stained sacrifice, he will outright reject that, and man would be dead. If, however, there was a man who was sinless, not stained by sin, who would be willing to shed his own blood, in other words, lay down his life, then God would accept that sacrifice as the payment for sin, and thus, those who were willing to come to faith in Christ and become God's servants, God would forgive their sins based on that sacrifice of that sinless man. And that's who Jesus was and what he did. In going to the cross, Jesus willingly laid down his life. It wasn't taken from him. He shed his blood as the propitiation, the payment to appease the righteous justice of God, so that God could forgive the sins that were previously committed and be the justifier of those who had faith in Jesus. For the Jew and the Gentile before Christ, that meant faithfully following God under the law that they were under. But for the Jew and Gentile after Christ, that meant coming to faith in Christ under the new covenant that came into force at the cross. This new covenant would bring no boasting with it, either for the Jew or the Gentile, for it came in apart from the law, the law meaning the law of Moses, and apart from the deeds of the law of Moses. Thus, both the Jew and the Gentile would be saved by the same God in the same way through obedient faith in Christ. Is the law of Moses made void because God justifies people through faith? No, for the law of Moses is established through this. How? Because Deuteronomy 18 prophesied of a prophet like unto Moses who would come that the Jews needed to listen to. He would fulfill all of the words written in the law and bring in a new law, a new covenant that wouldn't be exclusive to either the Jews or the Gentiles. It would be established on better promises and provide a better hope, the forgiveness of sins through faith. Today, there is still use for the law of Moses. No, not as our authority for today, but to establish the righteousness and faithfulness of God in fulfilling his promises. This idea, though, of salvation apart from the works of the law was a difficult one for the Jews to fully understand, for it went against all of their thinking up to this point. That is why Paul is going to further flesh out this argument in chapter 4. So we hope you'll return for those lessons. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Romans chapter 4, verses 1 to 12, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends, so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.